Hi, my name is Lindsay Rice, well a signature artist, and today I'm going to be taking you through color blocking. So what is color blocking? Color blocking is going to be a focus on ultra precise placement that is going to emphasize contrast, either contrast in level or in tone. How you decide to place that contrast is all going to be based on client suitability and their lifestyle. You'll get to meet my model Rosy in a second, but today we're going to be focusing on color blocking with highlights. We're going to be doing an express face frame placement with chunky highlight technique. Today I'll be using a three step consultation and here we're going to identify, look at our desktop destination, and then of course our service. When we identify, not only are we looking at, of course, the hair analysis, natural level, percentage of gray, etc., but also identifying what's going to be suitable for her lifestyle. Next, we're thinking about the destination. Where are we going? Not only in the service today, but also her goals long-term. Lastly, we're going to be looking at what are the services that we're going to do to be able to achieve all of Rosie's goals. So the first piece of our consultation is going to be to identify. And I like to split this up into two different segments, really thinking of my lifestyle consultation versus my technical consultation. So with our model Rosy, she's wanting something very young and fresh and low maintenance, so we want to take that into consideration. So now with our technical consultation, we're looking to identify natural level, percentage of gray, texture, and porosity. So with Rosy, she is a natural level three, which is a dark brown, moving into a pre-existing level four, medium brown, and then on the ends, we have some areas of a level five light brown. So Rosie does have some gray, but it's less than 25%. So today we're going to be focusing more on soft gray blending versus full coverage. As far as Rosie's texture and porosity, if we look at texture and we give this a feel, she has more of a coarse texture, so it feels more like a wire. For porosity, towards the mid lengths and ends, she does have more high porosity as it feels a little bit rougher. We also want to consider face shape as well as skin and eye color. So with Rosie's face shape, I really want to bring some emphasis to her beautiful cheekbones. Rosie has warm skin and warm eyes. So all of this information we're going to take into consideration when choosing our destination. For our destination, we're wanting to add some brightness around the face. So we're gonna focus on a nice, rich, cool base with some soft, neutral clay bronze dimension through the mid lengths and ends. So now let's focus on the service. Today, we're going to be doing an express face frame with chunky highlights. So let's break that down into five steps. First, we're going to prime the hair with Color Motion Plus pre-color treatment. Then we're going to lighten with Blondor Plex. We're going to add depth with Coleston Perfect. Then we'll gloss with Shinefinity and of course finish with care with Color Motion Plus. To prime Rosie's hair, because we're doing an all over color, I'm gonna be using the Color Motion Plus pre-color treatment. This is gonna to help to balance porosity for a nice even color result. So for our express face frame, you can see that we're working with this headband section through the front and it sits right in front of the apex. And then we split that up into three blocks. We have one on the top and one on either side. You can see that through the top, we have it slightly off center and that's because she naturally wears her hair off to the side. So through the sides, we're going to be working with a nice slow diagonal. Through the top section, we're going to be working with a classic herringbone. So we're ready to begin our lightening step. We're gonna be utilizing Blondor Plex with 10 volume at a one to two ratio. I wanna work really nice, low and slow because we're going to be putting color in between these foils. I'm gonna be starting in the sides and we're gonna be working with diagonal subsections. And then diagonal is going to be a really nice, slow diagonal so that it's nice and soft and curved to the head, but we're still working on a horizontal plane. So in these subsections, I'm gonna be working with a chunky highlight. When doing a chunky highlight, especially on coarse textured hair, I like to work with a wide weave that is nice and flat. So that way we're able to get really nice, good saturation through this hair. 
Here you can see that my weaves are thin enough to be able to saturate, but also nice and wide so you get that nice chunky ribbon effect. So I'm starting to saturate towards the top of my section, but as I get closer to the root, I'm going to softly and gently feather and that will help in the blend and transition as I begin to add depth back in. So I'm leaving about a half inch in between each of my sections. You can see here that I'm working on a section that hits right on her temple where she's got these kind of soft, shorter baby hairs. I'm gonna go ahead and leave those baby hairs out because I wanna maintain depth in that area and then just continue my chunky weave behind that. So we want to ensure that we are really adding enough product and saturation to get that lightness and brightness that we want. So my pro tip here is that you really want to think about that you almost can't see the hair through that layer of product. That helps me to make sure that I'm getting the right saturation. So here we're in an area where we're working right above the round of the head. So we wanna consider how that is going to fall over the hair underneath it. We're also at an area where we're hitting that front hairline. So I need to consider, do I want lightness right here or do I want more depth? For me, I want a bit more depth in that area just to maintain that continuity of a nice, rich, deep root working into those mid lengths and ends having more dimension. So I'm gonna roll and pull some tension towards that center area to bring that bottom edge to the top. Give a little slight pucker out so it's nice and smooth there. I'm going to emboss this edge with the teeth of my comb so that I get a nice crisp edge on my foil. Fold over with my comb and then I'll do the same on the other side. So I'm on my last section on this side and you can see it's almost just a small triangle. I want this to be like a nice kind of veil over the top. So I am going to slightly back comb just for a bit of diffusion at the root. And then we'll go ahead and place this in the foil. And I'm gonna go ahead and fold this up to the top. But because it's such a skinny section, I'm gonna go ahead and lock the edge of this right on the corner on a slight diagonal, fold in my side. I'll do the same on the other side. And that just helps to ensure that it won't slip as I'm moving the foils around when I put the color in between. So I'm gonna repeat the same sectioning on the other side, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and remix my lightener. It's a good idea to remix your lightener every 15 to 20 minutes to ensure that it has the same power to lift. So now we're gonna start through the top block, and on the top block, we're going to be working with a herringbone sectioning pattern. So with that herringbone sectioning, we're going to be working with diagonals 
But as we move up the section, those diagonals are actually going to intersect. And that's gonna give us some nice soft blend as we go. As you can see, her natural part is off to the side. So we're going to be working off of that to make sure that it works for her everyday life. We're gonna continue with our nice wide chunky weaves. But notice that I am leaving that front hairline out. Again, I want to maintain more depth there. So continuing to work with these diagonals, and you can see this is a diagonal section that's going in. And then you'll see on my next section on the other side, that diagonal will actually intersect. So as I move up the head, I'm going to go back and forth to maintain that balance and that intersection at the parting. So now I've moved to the other side. So you'll start to be able to see these intersect as I continue up. So we've completed our lightening step. So now we're gonna move into incorporating the depth as the foils are processing. We're going to be working with our new shade in Coleston Perfect, four stroke eight two, and that's going to be at a one to two ratio with our pastel developer. We're going to apply that from roots to ends in between our foils, starting in the back. So I'm gonna get started with that and then I'll be back for some pro tips of how to apply the tint in between. Now that we've completed the color application from roots to ends in the back, I'm gonna to start to apply the color in between the foils. So I'm gonna start by lightly tapping the color right on top, bringing this foil back, applying to the regrowth, picking up so that way I can saturate the mid lengths and ends. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. A good pro tip here is don't be afraid to paint right on top of that foil. As long as your foils are in nice and tight, be confident that those products aren't going to mesh together. They will stay separate. So now I'm gonna continue by bringing all of these foils back away from the face and painting all of the hair in between. Now that we've completed adding in the depth between our foils, we're gonna go ahead and let this process. Once it's done processing, we're going to rinse, add our Wellaplex number two, let that process for 10 minutes, shampoo, and then move on with our glossing service.
Now that we've completed our lightening and adding in our depth, we're going to be going on to our next step, which is going to be glossing. I'm gonna be glossing with Shinefinity equal parts of 06 stroke 07 and 08 stroke 38 to create a beautiful natural clay bronze. I'm gonna start my gloss application using a bottle applicator. I'm gonna start in the front, applying to the root area. I'm going to insert the nozzle in and then release the product on the way out. This is going to create a really quick, fast and efficient application at the root, all the way through, up the section, until I hit that top corner. Then I'm going to use that flat edge of the nozzle to start to smooth that product back. Because she has a lot of hair, I'm gonna go ahead and subdivide this into two sections and then start to work Shinefinity through the mid lengths and ends. Once I've got enough product on, I'm gonna go ahead and take a wide tooth of my comb to really just rake the product through. Notice that you're not seeing a ton of products come back off on my comb. If a little bit does, that's okay, don't panic. Just go ahead and reapply it back to the hair. Now that we've completed our gloss application, we're gonna go ahead and let this process for up to 20 minutes. Once that's done, we'll then move on to our next step, which is care. Now that our gloss is processed, that has completed all of our steps for color. Now we're moving on to our last step, which will be care. I'm gonna be using Color Motion Plus shampoo and conditioner to help prolong her color over time. After that, we're going to be moving on to styling. Now that I've completed care, we're going to be moving on to styling. I'm going to start with our Ultimate Repair Miracle Hair Rescue for repair and smoothness. Then I'm going to layer on some oil reflections. Then we'll add some Imi Body Crafter for volume, following up with Flowing Form for smoothness and control. Here you can see Rosie's final result. We worked with an express face frame incorporating chunky highlights. As a recap, we prepped with our Color Motion Plus pre-color treatment. Then we went in and lightened with Blondorplex. Next step was to add depth with Coleston Perfect. Then we did a gloss with Shinefinity. And of course we finished with Care with Color Motion Plus. Here you can see with the result that we created a nice, cool, rich base and adding dimension with a soft, natural clay bronze tone. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at lindsay.wella and for more color and care education, go ahead and head over to wellaed.com.